Welcome to the Wander Learn Show. I'm your host, Francis Tapa. I'm here with Richard DeLong. He's from the United States, but he's been all over the place in Eastern Europe. Right now, we're recording this in Tbilisi, Georgia, the country in the Caucasus Mountains. And we're going to talk about the differences between the different European, Eastern European countries that he's lived in, what attracts him to Eastern Europe, why should people go there. And But we'll start off with the first question, which is, what are the differences between Ukrainians and Russians? Why are they even fighting? And my first question would be, I'm trying to help uh, m- people from the Western world to understand, Richard. Maybe as an analogy, if you're an American, that it, Ukraine is to Russia like Canada is to the United States, or is that a ridiculous analogy? Uh, is there any truth to that? Yeah. Is there any analogy there? Uh, can I propose a better analogy? No. Okay. <laughs> then it's a bad analogy. Okay. Bad analogy. <laughs> so here's a here's a better analogy. Uh, Ukraine is to Russia as Quebec is to Canada. Mm. C'est impossible. Je ne crois pas. Yeah. <laughs> Je ne sais pas. <laughs> so uh, the reason for that is in Ukraine, everyone, uh, almost everyone speaks Ukrainian. Most people speak Ukrainian. And most or almost everyone speaks or understands Russian. Whereas in Russia, uh, very few people understand Ukrainian. So it's more similar to the situation between the Czech Republic and Slovakia, or let's say uh, Canada versus Quebec, perhaps Catalonia and Spain, more more like that. Okay. We're talking different languages, but countries that have been tied historically for some period of time, but have different roots. Do you think that Belarus and Russia are equally different as Ukraine and Russia? Or are they more similar to each other? Okay, I'd say they're slightly more similar, but even that is is kind of a stretch. So they're more similar because they've been more Russianized. The position of the Belarusian language is a lot worse than that of Ukrainian at this point. Is it because Ukrainians have more nationalist, crazy people? Um, who are pushing their language and not letting Russians speak their language? I, I think it's... what I've heard. <laughs> I think this goes back more to history and maybe the size of the countries. Uh, and also the, period, the length of time in which the Ukrainian or Belarusian, Belarusian-speaking parts of the country were part of the Russian Empire. So Western Ukraine... Uh, only joined the Soviet Union late. It joined the Soviet Union later than the eastern parts. In Belarus, I don't know enough to say, but uh, my impressions are very clear impressions that um, there is a movement to begin using again the, the Belarusian language. Mm. Um, however, in politics, it seems that only Russian is used almost exclu- exclusively. Um, that is definitely not the case in Ukraine, and it, n- it wasn't the case even in 1990, when the country separated from, from Russia. Do you think that the, the relations are poisoned permanently between Ukraine and Russia, or do you, th- do you think it's going to take the rest of this century to heal the, those two nations? Yeah, a couple generations, yep. Uh, now, that healing can take place faster. Like, uh, let's say, healing between Germany and Poland. Right. Or it can take place slower over many generations, like, let's say... Now, you know more about this than I do. Like the uh, former Yugoslav republics. Yeah. And that ends this episode of the Wander Learn podcast, where we explore travel, technology, and transformation. If you'd like to see the show notes with links to what we've talked about, go to wanderlearn.com and click on this episode. If you'd like to connect with me, just remember F tapon that's my first initial and my last name f tapon is always my social media username my website is ftapon.com do you want to leave me an anonymous voicemail where you can make a comment or ask a question then go to speakpipe.com slash f tapon furthermore if you'd like to get rewarded for supporting my projects then go to patreon.com slash f tapon that's where you can pick up some remarkable rewards for as little as two dollars a month now, five quick favors. Number one, subscribe to the Wander Learn podcast. Two, download it. Three, share it. Four, review it. And five, sign up for my newsletter at wanderlearn.com. Our theme music was composed by Eric Stratman. 
This is Francis Tabon encouraging you to wander and learn. Thank you.